something to someone. So sounds so much about uh, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 that we've covered January 1, January 8. Uh, January 1, uh, it was, of course, God created all things and put everything in its place. What is my place? But secondly, Genesis chapter 2 last week, he said everything has a purpose, everything taking care of something else, someone else. So thank you so much for that. Make me a blessing to someone today. And Don, I know you've got some ideas about how we can be a blessing to others today, right? Yes, sir, I sure do. First one is to move that out of our walkway for communion. <laughs> um, we have voters meeting. The annual voters meeting is today, 1130. Everybody's welcome to sit and hear what our business is here at the church. The voters are really strongly encouraged to be here, so we have a quorum. We need to pass the budget, and we need to have election of officers today. And we'll try to get done with it in a hurry, but it's going to start after the second service. Now, the good thing, there's 12 congregations in our circuit. One of them's in Mercedes. It's called Emmanuel. Our 5 o'clock service that we do is uh, uh, con uh, conducted by Pastor Ed Weber, and he's bilingual. And so he runs a, the Mother Church Emanuel, and then he runs Mission Emanuel in Mercedes, and he comes over here Sunday afternoons at 5 for our service. They're having, they have a parochial school there, uh, pre-K through 5, and they're having a fundraiser there next Saturday, a free will offering for anyone that wants to come. But the really good deal is they always wait every year for the winter Texans get down here because that's when the polka band people come. They're having a polka fest. And they have a really nice gymnasium there. And people dance. They, they, they'll have eight or ten different kinds of German potato salad. And I never knew that there's that many different kinds of potato salad. We, I grew up with one. <laughs> but it's really, really good. They're going to have brats, beer, kraut, the whole deal, and, and polka. It starts next Saturday, 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. You're all welcome. Mercedes Emmanuel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Don. Emmanuel Lutheran Church, 11 to 2. I think I work, know where lunch is going to be next Saturday, this Saturday. All right, awesome. God's blessings to each of you uh, as, as we worship our risen Lord to our opening hymn is Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. Yeah. 
rise for our invocation. Today's liturgy is found, uh, if you want to follow it in the, in the hymnal, it's found on page 151 in the following in the front. Thus we gather, Lord, in the power of our baptism. In the waters you washed us, even as John the Baptist washed Jesus, and he took upon himself our sin. But now in the waters of baptism, you put your name on each of us individually, saying, you are precious to me. You are my family, and I will love you forever. Thus we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Through our mission of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of the Lord in name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Psalm 19 is our intro today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech. And night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Whose voice is not heard. Their meaning line, their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has sent a tent for the Son. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Thus, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for us. Victory. 
The Lord be with you. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 49, beginning at the first verse. <coughs> Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you people from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, he who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord and my God has become my restraint. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the redeemer of Israel and his holy one, to one deeply despised abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. So you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, Guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Holy Gospel is found in St. John's Gospel. Last week we read about Jesus' baptism. Now, that story continues as after Jesus' baptism, John continues to witness to others. It's thus, John chapter 1. <laughs> 
The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The, dis the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. And so they came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that whole day for it was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He, was, he first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. He brought Peter to Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue with our sermon hymn, It is great is thy faithfulness. You may be seated.
How special, Lord, to boldly proclaim our faith in that truth. Great is your faithfulness. In my walk in faith, I'm not always faithful. There are times when I turn my own way. <clears throat> there are times when you say yes, and I want to say no. There are times when you say come, and I want to go. There are other times that you say go, and I say no. But great is your faithfulness. You never give up on me, but continue to envelop me in your love and in your purpose. Lord, settle my heart. Send me. Send me to tell others of your love so that others might know you and know your love for them even as I know your love for me. Great is your faithfulness in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Just to review quickly, you remember I've told you that absolutely every word in here is true. Every paragraph is true. Every book is true. From beginning to end, 100% true. But each week, we start by reviewing the two major purposes for all of this. John chapter 20, we start with that, verses 30 and 31. As John reminds us, though this book, every word is true, absolutely true, it is not complete. Everything Jesus did is not written down here. But everything that is written is written that you and I can know that Jesus is the Christ the promised Messiah, and that when we believe in him, we have life through him. John chapter 15 underscores that purpose. Every book, everything that has been written, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, you and I might have hope. Well, let's underscore that. As you know, this whole month, we're going to be looking at the new beginnings. Genesis chapter 1, we started with that January 1. In the beginning, God spoke. Every time he spoke, what he spoke happened. And as he looked back over the whole of creation, Everything was in its place. What does that say to you and me today? Is, did God finish his creation? And as, he, as we finished Genesis chapter 1, it says, and so God sat on his throne and said, okay, you're on your own. You can shake your head like this. <laughs> right? That's not what it says. God's act of creation, God's act of speaking, Genesis chapter 1, has never stopped. Now, in 2022, he's continuing to create. He's continued to put things in their proper place, right? And so we moved to, from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 2. There was a different story of creation because God has a different purpose in Genesis chapter 2 in terms of introducing you and me to Jesus and to give us hope. In Genesis chapter 2, he comes along and he says, there is no man 
so there were no plants because there was no man to take care of them. And so he makes the man. Then he makes the garden and he puts the man in the garden and he says, take care of my garden. There's the key word in Je Genesis chapter 2. Take care of this. And he makes the animals and brings the animals to the man and say, take care of this man. And then the crown of his creation in Genesis chapter 2, he makes the woman. But he didn't leave her out in the forest, right? He brings her to the man and says, take care of one another. Genesis chapter 2 says, not only did God create us and put us in the proper place, but he gives us work to do, to take care of someone, something else. So now we come to Genesis chapter 3 in the third week. And of course, Genesis chapter 3 introduces us to the serpent. And he comes along with his temptations. And everything goes out of place. Everything comes out of purpose, right? The serpent comes along. I'm in Genesis chapter 3, just obviously paraphrasing it. But in Genesis chapter 3, comes along and he asks, are you absolutely certain God said this? Can't we expand this just a little bit more? No! If you eat of this fruit, oh, and it, it is luscious, it is just dripping with juice, and oh, it is so great. You won't die. So he not only cast doubt, but he denied God. No, you won't die. You will decide. Have you ever heard that before? You deserve it. A little bit won't hurt. I can tell you about chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> One won't hurt. And they're right. I don't stop with one cookie. I stop with one box of cookies. <laughs> right? And, and see, that's, that's what Satan was doing when he cast doubt, denied what God had said, and then comes along with his own promise. You won't die. You will be like God. You will choose for yourself what is right and what is wrong. I mean, after all, aren't you mature enough? Aren't you old enough to make your own decisions? That's what Satan's doing. And the whole thing falls apart. Well, remember, these stories are here to give you and me hope. These stories are here to introduce us to Jesus. So the, the real power of this story isn't so much in terms of what Adam and Eve did. Because I don't know about you, but I continue to fall for Satan's traps. One won't hurt. Nobody will know. Oh, you're old enough to make your own decisions. Satan still talks in my head from time to time. And too often, I still, just like Adam and Eve, I still believe him. But the power of the story is not so much in terms of what Adam and Eve did as what God did. God could have just closed his eyes, shaken his head and said, I can't believe they did that, and walked away. But he didn't. 
God did not walk away. He continued to speak. Remember Genesis chapter 1? Every time he spoke, what he spoke happened. God continues to speak in this situation. Adam and Eve were scared. They hid from God, which, as you know, cannot happen. But they tried to hide from God. They tried to hide from one another. And then they blamed one another and blamed God for what they had done. God could have walked away from the whole thing, washed his hands of it, and started from scratch. But he didn't. He turns to the serpent, and he says, on your belly. You're going to eat dust the rest of your life. And my promised Messiah will crush your head. Deliverance for you and me. He turns to the woman and he says, I will greatly increase your pain in childbearing. Moms, answer me. <laughs> Is that true? When does the pain end? Does your pain end when the baby is born? When does the pain end? Never. Right? Right? You still struggle with them, for them. You ache for them. You want to make decisions for them, right? All your life. So when God says, I will greatly increase your pain in childbearing, he spoke the truth, right? By the way, he didn't leave us out. Right? What did he say to us? By the sweat of your brow, you will bring forth your fruit. Among what? He said thorns and thistles. What did he mean? Weeds. <laughs> Do you know weeds? Out on our farm, they're called mesquite trees. <laughs> and they're called prickly pear. Cockle burrs, okay, got some of those too. <laughs> okay, but right, he's, he says that. That's, I, I know how to raise those things. Grass for the cattle is a whole different ball game. That takes a lot of work. But the weeds come as a result. But that's, wh that's where the story, the story doesn't end just with those curses, those, those speakings in terms of, you're going you're gonna to live with your sin forever. He goes on to say, and that's, and that's my whole text today. I'm in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. It says, the Lord God, Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed. He clothed them. Because remember, as soon as they ate of the fruit, what was the first thing they did? They went over to the fig tree and started ripping leaves off the fig tree to cover their nakedness. But how long does a fig leaf last? Right? You know, they were constantly naked. But God takes an animal skin, lamb skin, right? A lamb died immediately. Is he introducing us to Jesus? Right? Immediately, a lamb dies in order to provide lamb skin to cover their nakedness. They were clothed. So that's the word I want to spell for you this morning is the word covered. I mean, I'm not covered. Is the word clothed. From Romans chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, is the letter C. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. 
The letter C is so important because just, just like the lambskin that totally covered the nakedness of Adam and Eve, so the lambskin, the blood of Jesus Christ, that's why communion is so precious to us, the blood of Jesus Christ covers completely our sin. So that when you and I stand before the judge, God himself, we sinners, your head can bob like this, right? Are you still a sinner? Yes, I am a sinner. I should be, you know, just like yesterday, I, I came to a red light here in Port Isabel. I came to a red light, stopped. No traffic was coming. I made the, I made the right turn, stopped after, at a red light, no traffic coming. I turned. As soon as I turned, the policeman's life went bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> <coughs> What did I do? Did I drive away? No, I pulled over. He drove on by. He was going <laughs> after somebody else. <laughs> but as soon as his lights went on, I pulled over. I had no clue what I had done, but I was going to listen, right? Who's the boss? Who's the boss? Okay, so, but let me see. I saw the lights, so I stopped. When the judge looks at you and me, but we're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, what does he see? That was a good question, okay? When he looks at you and me, what does he see? The blood of Jesus, that's right. He sees the blood of Jesus. He doesn't see our sin, he sees the blood of Jesus. Well, I want to give you an example of that this morning. I've been here, this is my third Sunday. You've gotten to know me a little bit, okay? Every Sunday morning when I walk in, what am I wearing? I'm wearing a, I, well, at worship, yes ma'am, you're right. I'm, wear, I'm wearing a cassock now at worship, but when I walk in the, at the very beginning, what do I wear? I'm wearing a suit, that's right. What color is it? Black, that's right. I wear a black suit. And what are my shoes? Black. And what is my shirt? White, right? A white shirt, black suit, black socks, black shoes, right? Why didn't you know that? Why didn't you know that? Right? Because my socks have been covered. That's right. They're popcorn socks this morning. Right? The toe of them are actually very yellow with popcorn and the like and then the red and, red and white box that it normally comes in. And I wore those specifically just to catch you off guard because, see, that's the way we are with our sin before God. But the blood of Jesus Christ covers us. Our sin is still there. Our sin is still ugly. Our sin causes all sorts of brokenness and all sorts of broken relationships and the like, and it causes all sorts of troubles on this earth. But before God, the blood of Jesus Christ, that's why communion is so precious to us, because I have sin. There are so many things that I still do wrong. I don't want to, but I still do them wrong. I make wrong decisions. I turn in wrong directions. Marilyn asked me to do something, and it's something that I know I should do. But too often, 
it goes by, and I haven't done it yet. And yet, the blood of Jesus Christ, just like my pants legs are covering my socks, the blood of Jesus Christ covers that sin. The letter C. So important. The letter L comes. You, you can, I bet you can guess what that is. That's the love of God. Psalm 111, we read this. Psalm 111, back January 1, and remember it so powerfully. It said, the, co the covenant of God, his commitment to you and to me, his commitment to covering the blood of Jesus Christ, covering over our sin, paying 100% for all of our sin. He keeps saying it over and over and over in Psalm 111. His righteousness endures forever. He remembers his covenant forever. He ordained his covenant forever. His love, there's the letter L, his love of you in spite of your sin is how long? Forever. That's right. It's permanent. Permanent. If someone asks you, when you die and the Lord returns, are you going to heaven? I heard two or three of you answer. How many answers should we have? All of us. That's right. That's right. Why is heaven secure? Because you are good? Because you've straightened up and now you're flying right and you're doing all the right thing? No, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with him. The blood of Jesus Christ covers all of my sin. That's his forever love that covers me. Let me add to that the letter O. That's in 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, talks about the letter O in that clothing. Dear children, you are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, who is John talking about when he says, the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world? Who is he talking about? Who is in you? Jesus. That's right. As a matter of fact, in just a little bit, well, it depends on how long-winded I am, but in, in a little bit, you're going to be coming up, and you're going to take more of Jesus, right? You're going to eat his body and drink his blood, putting more of Jesus inside of you. And he says, who is in us, Jesus, is greater than he that is in the world. And who is in the world? The devil is. That old serpent that tricked Adam and Eve and tricks you and me. And yet Jesus in you, Jesus in me, if we face Satan with Jesus, Rather than with our strength, we overcome. You have overcome. There's the letter O, right? The victory is yours and mine in the blood and body of Jesus Christ. I'm just flip the page to 1 John chapter 5 for the letter T. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Now, the letter T is tables are turned. The tables are turned. Satan comes and he says, did God say? Well, they got, Adam and Eve got into a debate. You and I kind of get into a debate, too, because we said, 
I, 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 I don't know exactly what he said. Now, what's the greatest answer for that? Let's go ask God. Right? If Adam and Eve, when Satan, when the serpent said, did God say, Adam and Eve could have said, well, let's ask him. Right? Because greater is he who is in you, Jesus, than he who is in the world. So when he comes along, we say, oh, I do not belong to myself. I don't make that decision. Let's ask God. Let's ask Jesus. And when we do that, by the way, what does Satan do when we call on the name of Jesus Christ? What does Satan do? He flees. He flees, right? He leaves. Now, he's only going to go out to the parking lot so that you get in a fight on the way home, right? <laughs> well, where should we go for lunch? I don't know. Wherever you want to go, right? He doesn't have to go very far, but he will leave this room and go and wait for a more opportune time. But remember, greater is he that is in me. <coughs> Jesus and he that is in the world. All I have to do is call on the name of Jesus and Satan flees. We can turn the tables on him. To what advantage? The letter H. To what advantage? And I started with that today in Romans chapter 15. I, I use that as the opening every week. Remember? Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and encouragement of the scripture we might have what? Hope. That's right. That's the letter H in being clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we can have hope. Are there speed bumps in life? Yes. <clears throat> Are there hiccups in life? Are there mistakes that we make and sometimes want to stand on our own? Yes. But that's why we have all of this to remind you that the speed bump isn't the destination. The destination is living with Jesus. I have hope. This speed bump, this bad decision that I made is not the end. And it does not destroy my relationship with God. It does not end his relationship with me. His relationship with me is permanent forever, forever. And that takes me to the letter E, so powerful 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Listen for the repetitive word in this. God is able, there's the letter E, enabled. We are enabled, what? God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That's God's love for you and for me. All that you need at all times to do good for him. Lastly, it's Philippians chapter 4, the very familiar passage. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do not a little bit, not some things. What does he say? I can do all things. All things. There is absolutely no limit to this God and his love 
and his purpose, his place and purpose for me in this world. My place and purpose is constantly changing as God's needs change, not as mine, but as his needs change. I didn't grow up in Fort Isabel. I don't live here permanently, right? But he said, I need you to be there. Bill Lovin made the phone call, but Bill Lovin didn't invite me here. God did. He said, I want, to tell the, I want you to tell these people, Jesus loves them. And Jesus has a place and a purpose for each of you. And he who is in you, Jesus Christ, is greater than any temptation that will come to you. Every day, he wants you to have that victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you join with me in a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for that victory that I am clothed and I can stand before you. I don't have to fear you, be afraid of you as the judge. But I stand there, not because I've done anything right, but because Jesus has washed me clean and covers me every day. Now, in the power of your spirit, send me, Lord, in the gracious, empowering work of Jesus Christ. Amen. In acknowledging he who is in us that is greater than he who is in the world, we stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in things visible and invisible and in one, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord our God, we ask your blessings. We know that we are secure, but so many of our loved ones, secure in the faith, yes, covered with the righteousness of Jesus, but they have other physical and sometimes mental struggles. Thus, Lord, we ask your healing. We ask your healing for each of those loved ones whom we name in our own hearts at this time. We especially lift up Dale Meyer and Angelica Reese, Ruiz to your care, enfold them as a father who 
welcomes his children into his arms, onto his lap, so also welcome them. Hold them. Give them your peace and your healing. We continue to lift up to you our president, our governor, and all of their advisors, the mayors and uh, city managers. Uh, be with each of them, Lord, for they have such, such difficult decisions to make in these days. Give them your blessings. And then for all travelers, watch over them, give them your safety and a safe journey home in the empowering name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated for our offering. Thank you so much. We rise for the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world you have made known to the nations in your son Jesus. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing
gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and your spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat this body and drink this blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night on which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup and again, having given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Drink of this, all of you. For this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Do this as often as you eat and drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. And so remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always.
There's a long black train coming down the line, feeding off the souls that are lost and crying. Rails of sin, holy evil remains. Watch out, brother, for that long black train. You can look to the heaven, you can look to the skies. You can find redemption staring back into your eyes. There is protection and there's peace the same. Burning your ticket for that long black train. Cause there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. Don't go riding on that long black train. There's an engineer on that long black train making you wonder if the ride is worth the pain. He's just a waiting on your heart to say, Let me ride on that long black train. But you know there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. Don't go riding on that long black train. Well, I can hear the whistle from a mile away. It sounds so good, but I must stay away. That train is a beauty making everybody stare. But its only destination is the middle of nowhere. But you know there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. And don't go right on that long black train I say cling to the Father and His holy name and don't go riding on that long black train yeah watch out brother for that long black train the devil's driving that long black train.
Thus, having received the body and blood of our risen Lord, in us, greater than he that is in the world, covered by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, depart in his power and peace and the hope because he goes with you forever. Go in the gracious empowering of Jesus. lift up a very special thanks to you today. 60 years together, a 60th wedding anniversary. How special. Continue to bless not just husband and wife. Commitment, so much forgiveness, so much joy, so much adventure that you have led them for, through, and so much more to come. Thank you, Lord, for that. And each of us, just thank you for uh, the family with which you have blessed each of us in the empowering name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thus the Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and is gracious unto you. The Lord lifts up upon you and gives you his peace. Amen.